So B6, and this is a real B6, not like I said on the other video. Uh, preventing and treating disease, it's quite a short chapter, um, but some, some kind of things that I, I quite like to come up to, to be honest. Um, I've got a feeling they like to ask these questions on um, sort of graph questions and tables on health statistics and disease and things. That's the kind of stuff they, they particularly like. Anyway, uh, first thing to consider is vaccination. And this is where you introduce um, either a weak or dead form of the pathogen into the body and you let the immune system respond to it. The key to this is the presence of antigens. Um, if you haven't seen the, the previous video, antigens are simply, uh, if we've got some kind of cell, they're shapes on the outside of, of cells. We don't normally draw them in, but they're there. Chemical shapes on the outside. Um, and your immune system can recognize them. Um, antibodies will join on to these antigens um, and are involved in then destroying uh, any of the pathogens. So antigens are introduced um, in, in the cases of vaccinations. There is uh, always a risk of side effects with any, well not just a vaccination, but with any, any medical um, you know, we, we don't think of the risk of putting a plaster on, for example, but there's, there is a risk. You can have an allergic reaction to them. Um, there's a risk with, with vaccinations. However, there is a much bigger risk from the actual diseases themselves um, for the population. So you know, it's, it's always going to be a case of balancing things out. And sometimes uh, we overestimate one risk and we underestimate, for example, the, the risk from a disease. So yeah, you know, sometimes people can have, the side effects can be quite mild, but um, yeah, there's always that possible risk there. Uh, antibiotics next. Now antibiotics are a drug, that medicine, which will uh, directly kill. Now we've got to be careful because we've got antigens, we've got antibodies, now we've got antibiotics. Literally this word means against living things I suppose or anti-life <laughs> um, they're going to kill bacteria okay that's what antibiotic does it is not of any use against viruses at all okay so no virus is going to be affected by antibiotics they, they just not they, they need a different approach usually what happens with viruses um, is your own immune system will destroy the virus uh, it's just a case of giving your body enough time to um, to deal with that so there aren't really that many um, medicines around that are antiviral there are but you're not going to come across them very much antibiotics are just going to be for bacteria um, there is the risk here that um, and this is you know, quite a popular thing to be asked about resistant drug resistant bacteria or antibiotic resistant bacteria and these are bacteria that um, have had a mutation and so their genes have changed and as a result of that they're no longer affected by um, the medicine now this might seem strange um, but what's happening here is actually quite straightforward um, if you think about when there's let's say a nasty cold going around um, and not everybody gets it or some people might get it really bad and some people not so bad why because everyone's different now some people might, might not get it at all um, and that's because could be a few reasons but it could be that genetically they are different and the virus for whatever reason doesn't affect them um, and this is all that's happened here that some bacteria are not affected by a particular medicine. And by the way, we are genetically different and we don't respond to every medicine. Some people respond one way to a medicine, some people respond differently. Some people, for example, are uh, allergic to penicillin, which is an antibiotic. Other people um, have no problems with it, it's a lifesaver. So some bacteria can become resistant. The problem is if the, if the bacteria that survive um, then reproduce themselves or copy themselves, which is what they do, all those bacteria can now become resistant and it means your antibiotics don't work anymore um, and it's a big issue uh, we get antibiotics of course i think most people remember that it was fleming who uh, initially discovered what's recognized as the first antibiotic um, which is penicillin also florian chain with the two uh, americans who were involved in developing it um, so he discovered it, they then made it so that you could uh, make lots and lots of it and you could make it in a, a controlled kind of dose um, 
and you know knew how much you were getting and it was concentrated enough to, to stop the problem so you know, their work was also important but people tend to just remember Fleming uh, it was discovered being given off by fungus another popular question um, is to grow some you know, bacteria in a dish and then you look in the dish and you get these holes where um, you can put fungus in here or you can put an antibiotic drop in there and wherever you get these gaps these spaces that's where the bacteria have been killed with your your drops of antibiotic okay and obviously the one with the biggest space is the antibiotic that works the best that, that's the kind of principle behind it. Um, we're still continuing to look for antibiotics so we might look in fungi but they're also looking in various plants they're looking in bacteria actually um, soil bacteria for example um, seem to produce um, chemicals that you know, can kill off other bacteria so people continue to search for these things um, this relates to a much much later topic um, one of the reasons that it's a good idea to maintain what we call biodiversity which just means having lots of different species of plants and animals um, if you kill off too many species of plants before we've had a chance to study them we might miss out on the chance to to find important new medicines and then last thing is to, to mention the idea of it's got to be um, testing drugs so this basically comes in two sections what's called the preclinical phase where you test it on cells in a lab and then on animals and again I'm not making a, a value judgment on whether this is right or wrong that's just one of the stages it goes through so that's known as preclinical trials the clinical trial stage is the one that involves humans now it can vary um, but first of all typically you test it on healthy volunteers um, and the reason you do that is you're looking for um, any possible dangerous side effects if it gets through that stage without um, causing the problem then you can test it on uh, the patients with the actual condition um, now you can kind of skip that phase if it's something for a particularly nasty um, disease or condition you might get people volunteering with that condition saying look I'll, I'll take this risk um, I'll, I'll I know there might be side effects but I'll take the risk because there's a chance it might make me better so yeah sometimes you can sort of skip that, that phase out it takes a long long time this a um, lot of things never get beyond this stage or you know, sort of beyond up, up to here things that can work in cells in a lab do not necessarily work inside of a living organism so lots of times you might see things in the news about new um, drugs that promise to treat all kinds of diseases they never really get anywhere beyond this stage because they just don't work inside of a living thing um, yeah this last uh, last stage here in the clinical trials with the healthy volunteers remember this is the one where we have um, this idea of the double blind and this simply means um, when people are given the the drug neither the patient or sorry neither the volunteer or the doctor know if the volunteer is getting either the proper drug or a placebo version a placebo is a version of the drug that doesn't contain the um, important chemical so you shouldn't do anything what you're trying to look for there is you're trying to compare does the drug actually make a difference or do people just feel and think they're getting better because they feel they've been um, treated with something so in a double blind neither the doctor nor the patient knows which one they're getting somebody would know but it, it wouldn't be the people who are working on, on doing the actual um, handing out the drugs one last point on this um, very often what's done uh, in these trials is not given a drug or placebo you give them the the new drug you're trying to develop or you give them the older version of it because you know if you're trying to find out if, if this helps people at this stage you don't want to be giving your patients something that isn't going to do anything for them you know you'd give them the old drug and, and test the new one to see if it makes a difference so you get different versions of that